What's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of the Stanley Parable, and we are back with Jack. Here he is again. Ah, ah, the crowd goes wild. All right, we're going to jump straight into this. I has to sneeze. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, you ready? Let's do this. Man, that last this is a story. Uh, episode. I don't want to listen to you. That last, uh, that last round was terrifying. But I am going to try this, this window one more time. And Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. One more time. Okay, well, I think I tried, so let's leave that on. Oh, no, I'm not. Ah. I just turned off that computer. I just turned off all the computers. I think that was the only computer on. No, you just can't let me feel powerful there, could you? Watch this. I have learned that me and this narrator are no friends. No friends. No amigo. No bueno. No amigo. I think we established you were no amigo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Started. Do not want to go in there. This is like following. Yet his there was path. not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided oh, to go, go up back to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Never mind, guys. He's gone. I tried. Sorry if y'all can hear that lightning in the background, but it's still storming over here. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Screw you. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors <laughs> close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. 
and he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. <laughs> Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Yes, it did. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body, and then she turned and ran. Hmm. Lovely. Here we go again. Wow. That was actually kind of fucked Stanley had never seen the office this brightly lit. Was it a sign of something? He hoped it was. He hoped very much that it was. You know, 
have to go back that way. Hmm. Any uh, suggestions there, buddy? Just go look for a when new Stanley ending. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Just turned around. Oops. Wow. Yes. This room. What a but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Well, I thought about going down that elevator, but then I remembered it didn't turn out so very well for me. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I miss the life hacks again. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Synergize. Fire paper guy. Hire <laughs> somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? <laughs> I'm hoping the more I click around, something I can find. But there's that broom closet again. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, I did that last time, didn't I? Oh, oh, ho, 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 guys, I found something. Wow. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, money crisp. This is a fancy bathroom. It's a very fancy bathroom. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't understand. I finally find something new and it doesn't let me do anything. I wonder if I can flush the toilet. I don't know if there's anything in there. I think you're right. Oh. Well, that was quite lovely. Stepping in. Guys, I locked myself out of the. Ooh. Stairs are open again. The stairs are open again. So is that door? It's a new door, guys. It's a new event. I have. Should I keep going this way, guys? Oh wait, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> Four eleven. I haven't heard uh the narrator in some time now, so he's ditched you. He doesn't love you anymore. Not like I do. Oh. Uh. Hey guys, I'm Almost back to my old office. A new door. Oh, hell no. Oh, not the door. I don't want to go that way. I don't want to go that way. I 
Come on, let me out the window. <laughs> let me out the window. Please let me out the window. Please. I really want out the window. So close. Got to be away. Just give up on the window. I don't want to give up on the window. I do not want to go into that dark freaking space. Just, just happen. Uh oh. Hey guys. You are now leaving. Oh heck yeah. Escape pod bay. I don't believe you. Oh god. Decisions. I got no choice. And here we go. Wow. I really suck at navigating. Now you're on floor. I was really, really sketchy of walking into that dark room. I really did not want to do that. I'm getting more sketchy as I keep going up and up and up. I'm on 757 now. Where's the escape pod? Does it say 758? I have no idea. I think it says 758. But we are on 758. Maybe it was 759. Maybe so. Man, this building has a lot of floors. It's a ridiculous amount of floors. I wish we could take Maybe it. it was 780. Or 760. Wow, my counting skills. Oh. I found the escape pod. Launch bay. Escape. Or turning around. Oh. oh. There it is. Guys, I think I am awesome. What's going on? Well, I don't know. What the heck? <laughs> you have to be kidding me. Why does office number 428 have an escape pod in it? Office 428? All these co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Well guys, that didn't work very well. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Wait, was that solitaire on the computer in that window? I think so. Solitaire. When I used to play this back in the day, I remember people saying that, uh, you could see a person walking through one of the windows if you got to it fast enough, but I could never do it. That's creepy. Well, guys, I'm, uh, 
When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's <laughs> office, hoping he might find an answer there. Well, guys. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Try this all one more time. And we're gonna go see the bathroom again. He says something different. Oh, it does. Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes. If the bosses suffered losses, then that's what the boss chose. Lovely. I want to trip the narrator again. The moment he. <laughs> I love doing that to him. Alright. This time, I'm going to keep going down. And down. And down. That. That sucked. <laughs> Rejected. Rejected. Oh man, it's going to do all this crap again, ain't it? We might just wrap up the video here because we don't want to end up showing y'all the same exact ending twice. And I think it's getting long enough. And we'll probably have another video next Saturday of the Stanley Parable. Maybe he'll find some more endings. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, thank you. Um.